what's going on today guys and welcome back to a new YouTube video uh, today we're gonna do a very very basic uh, how to play the one piece trading card game uh, a fairly fairly new ish uh, game uh, that just came out not too long ago I've been seeing its praises if you've seen other videos that I've done with the openings of uh, the new sets that have come out uh, and I finally got the opportunity to play my first tournament the other night so I was like you know what I got a decent enough ish you know grasp on this to kind of do an introductory um, uh, video for this game so uh, yeah I'm just gonna kind of go through it if I miss anything please feel free to point it out in the comments I'm sure I will uh, and I'm sure as this game develops over time I'll probably re redo this video at some point uh, you know whether it be like six months to a year new mechanics come out or maybe just do a kind of an in-depth dive of all the different mechanics of one piece uh, but for this video today we're just kind of kind of do the bare bones uh, for the most part and the most common um, themes that you'll see uh, in the game presently um, and as well uh, once the rest of my cards come in for this deck uh, for the revamping of it I'll be doing some deck profiles as well uh, a bunch of my friends have a ton of different decks that I can kind of showcase and go through and kind of do like kind of a breakdown on ideal ways of how to play them uh, obviously it depends on matchup sometimes but just the overall like gist of what you're trying to do with the deck uh, and we'll kind of do that today with this uh, with my Zoro deck today as well. To start with, uh, you need a 50 card deck, which is right here. 10 Dawn, uh, which are right here. These are so the Dawn and your leader card are always kept separate from your main deck. Uh, so if you ever played Magic the Gathering, Dawn's kind of like mana. Uh, except you don't actually start with it in your hand, you start with it over here, we'll get into that in just a little bit. Uh, so essentially I mean it's just like any other card game, you can start off by you know, rolling a die. Um, big thing, so the biggest thing for this, which I learned at the tournament, is it's best of one. Uh, presently, at least at least for local tournaments. It might be different for like a regional tournament or um, uh, what's uh, something cup. There's like bigger tournaments that have different names. I can't remember them off the top of my head right this second. But uh, so start off just like, like any other card game, best of one, which is a little weird. Um, I don't think any other card game is a best of one, but uh, this one is uh, at, at least for a local anyway. Uh, might be two out of three for a bigger tournament with a bigger entry, uh, but locals uh, it's best of one. Uh, you know, MTG, Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, I believe Pokemon. Although I've never played a, a Pokemon uh, local. Um, you know, all those are two out of three, so that's where it kind of kind of a little different there, right? Uh, so your leader card always starts uh, out onto the field. Um, uh, turn one, uh, each turn one for each player, you cannot uh, you cannot attack uh, right off the bat. So first turn you can't attack. Their first turn they can't attack, and then so if you go first turn three is when or uh, well turn three of the game, your second turn you can then attack. Uh, you start with your leader cards, and each leader card does something different. Um, my so what Zoro does is all of your characters gain a thousand power if it has one Don underneath it, and we'll go over that in just a minute. So obviously. Uh, there's a bunch of leaders out right now. Uh, man, I'm not exactly sure how many, but there's got to be at least 15 or, or so uh, leader cards out out right now. Um, so, and they all do different things, uh, and they all they all interact with your with your deck in different ways. Um, it's pretty neat. So we'll we'll go with an example of uh, say I won the die roll and I'm going first. Okay, so you would have this out. We would we pick up our five cards. Right, one, two, three, four, five. You start with five, uh, and then they they do have a mulligan rule. All right, and we're back. Sorry about that, guys. My battery was like, oh, hey, we have two bars left, and uh, and now we don't. Uh, so I think I was explaining the mulligan, if I remember correctly, and where we left off here. So we've got our Don over here. Don. I guess I just leave it in frame as we can pop that up there a little bit. So normally it'd be like, you know, I'm just trying to keep everything in frame here, but um, the way I usually situate things is you have your Don off to the left uh, below your leader, and then like your character cards go up here. So, um, Mulligan. Uh, you can Mulligan once. So say this is like an awful hand that uh, we hate. Um, we would send it back, shuffle, have your opponent cut, and uh, you get a new five, but you are stuck with those five. Um, okay, so 
that's the mulligan rule. So after you, okay, I say, okay, all right, I'm going to keep this. Okay, we're going first. Remember that. Um, the way this works is with your uh, leader card, it'll tell you how many life you start out with. Okay, it says it right down here in the bottom right corner. Most start out with five. I believe there's only one that starts out with six. I think there might be one that starts out with four. Um, don't quote me on if those are accurate or not, but I'm, I only can know, I only know of one that starts with six, I only know of one that starts with four. Um, so what this means is, so you start with five life, what you do is, you take the top five cards off the top of your deck, and they go off over here. So I'm sorry, I should have like a playmat that has, so they have playmats that have like life here, dawn, Don, like down, you know, down off over here onto the side. You can't really see; it's kind of out of frame. Leader spot, uh, deck spot, obviously, uh, graveyard spot or trash pile, I guess, because it's trash. It doesn't say send things to graveyard; it says send them to trash. But anyway, your life cards kind of go up here. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. So the whole objective of the game is to eliminate. All these life cards from your opponent, however many they may have, could be six, could be five, four, or yeah, whatever they start out with. You want to get rid of all of those, okay? And then uh, once those are all gone, uh, and you swing at your opponent, if it hits them directly, um, then you win the game, and that's how you win, okay? So life is kind of neat. Uh, kind of like a different aspect to any other card game that I've ever played, because uh, when you, so, I guess I should probably, how do I want to do this? Okay. What what we'll do is, what we'll okay. Let's just say okay. I'll get I'll get into more into life in a minute because I think I need to do this first. So I'm going first. Okay. So that means I don't get a draw. All right. And I only start off with one don. Okay. So if you're going first, you start off with one don, no draw. If you're going second, uh, you start off with two don, and you get you get to draw. Okay. So that's that's kind of how it goes as far as Dawn goes. Um, and then after the first turn, every turn that you take, you will add an additional two Dawn. Okay, so you get to, it's kind of so that's why it's kind of like mana, uh, mana in uh, MTG kind of because this is what you use to cast your cards. Um, but not exactly because you're not worried about having to like draw into it or starting off with so many because you are allocated a certain amount. It's it's kind of a it's kind of a really neat w way to for resources for resource management. I actually enjoy it a lot. Um, it might be like my favorite type of resource that's come out so far in terms of like how to play. Um, so yeah, pretty neat. Uh, so anyway, we start off with the one Don. Okay, uh, that's our first turn, right? So we go. So now we look into our hand. Okay, so your Don costs are going to be located in the top left. So this one costs one to, to play, one to play, three to play, one to play, four to play, so on and so forth. Um, so on this turn, we could play something, uh, you know, like uh, that's just a, kind of a horrible hand. I probably would have. Vulcan this way, <laughs> play you know play play the one drop, play the Atama, and uh, you know let them have their turn. There we go. Now it's turn number two for us, and we will get two more done. Uh, and then again, rem remember this is uh, so going first. The reason why going first is advantageous with this deck is because I have a nine drop in here, and I get to nine quicker going first than if I would going second. Um, so that's kind of the idea. Uh, there's a lot of decks that like going second. There's a lot of decks that like going first. It just kind of depends on what you're playing. This one specifically, you kind of more so want to go first, um, but that's not always the case. So it's kind of it's kind of neat how that kind of fluctuates as well. Because most most card games you want to go first. So obviously all these cards do various different things. You know, um, for example, if this Gordon will uh, auto focus for me here. That is you. Uh, so anyway, this one, uh, you may play this character in the bottom uh, of the owner's side. Give up to one uh, of your opponent's characters minus 3,000 power this turn. So if I, so I can activate this during main, uh, which is kind of confusing because there's not really any phases. But um, you can activate this, send it to the bottom of my deck, give something minus 3,000. So you can either beat over it um, or if you have like a, you know, if you have, say you're going against... Um, Say you're going against something that has 10,000 power, uh, or sorry, 9,000 power, I give it minus 3,000. Now I can use this, I can KO up to one of my uh, of your, uh, your opponent characters with 6,000 power or less. So I can use that to kill the thing that was 9,000 power, but since I manipulated its power, 
um, I can now kill it with this type of a card. Uh, obviously, you can't right now because you don't have enough done, but that's just an example of kind of the neat interactions that you can see throughout this uh, throughout this card game. Um, I mean, so so for right now, anyway, uh, things are pretty much splayed out on the car itself. If my autofocus would work, yeah. Uh, it kind of just tells you what the character does, uh, tells you like on play, so when you play the card, right? Uh, I can KO, KO up to one of your opponent's characters with uh, 3,000 power or less, okay? So that's on play. Uh, Otama does her own thing on play. There's ones there's ones like uh, like Gordon that, uh, that you can activate uh, at any given time, really, because there's not really... Um, any phases, so that's uh, that's another big thing to kind of point out. Um, there aren't really phases in this game, so what that means is, so so you know, for Magic Gathering, it's uh, you know draw, you know standby phase, uh, draw phase. I think it's standby anyway. I think there's a standby in, in Magic. Correct me if I'm wrong. I could be definitely wrong because um, I don't. I'm not. I don't play a ton of Magic either. I don't play. I don't play a lot uh, to begin with. But anyway. Uh, so normally there's like a draw phase, first main phase, um, battle fa uh, phase, uh, or, or um, yeah, just battle, uh, second main phase, end phase, and then pass your turn. So like there's kind of like phases of your turn. With one piece, not so much. So what I mean by that is, say I've got, say I've got Vista out right now, right? So I could, so I could play Vista, right, for three, for three Dawn, and Arrested Dawn is always turned sideways. That's pretty universal for a lot of different games. Um, so say I play Vista, right, and then I, and I, and say I couldn't do this in the same turn, but unless it has Rush, that's another uh, aspect to get into. Uh, say I swing, I can swing with him, swing with Vista, right? I swing with him, and then I go and I play. Just I play something else. I can I can then play something else, and then I can go back and swing with Otama. Obviously, you really want to do that because she has zero power. But you can that's you can do that. Okay, that's it's it's like you can do one thing, attack, do another thing, attack. Uh, it's it's kind of weird. It, it's kind of in my opinion, it probably get it's probably gonna get messy, and they might add phases at some point in time to the game. Maybe not. Maybe that's just what, you know how they wanted it. Whatever. Uh, we'll see. Um, so it's kind of yeah I don't know I don't know if I'd love that that aspect of the game but it it seems to work fine for the most part um, so yeah so anyway let's get into um, let's get into the other uh, the other thing you can do with Dawn which is a big a uh, facet of the game is so Dawn you see how it says uh, on your turn uh, plus one thousand so Dawn can either be used to cast things and it can also be used to power up things so that's what this means so when this says um, you know Dawn times one that means I have a Dawn underneath it so like so so now, because I have a Don, one Don underneath zero, first of all, his power is now 6,000 instead of 5,000. Sorry, I can't really see the power, but he has a power of 5,000. But because the Don underneath it is, is underneath it, it has 6,000 now, okay? And then because of his ability, because I have one Don underneath him, all of my other characters get plus 1,000 uh, power. So now my, my Vista is a, is a 4,000, my Otama is a 1,000, so on and so forth. Um, now keep this in mind, this is only for your turn. This is only on your turn. Um, all the powers go back to what they are on the cards, unless otherwise, unless you have you play some sort of card that gives it, it gives something uh, power until your next turn, then that would stay. But otherwise, like any Dawn power doesn't stay, does not um, apply to your opponent's turn. Uh, so that's kind of like a, a tricky thing to remember um, because you can stack all of your Dawn underneath something. And you're like, oh well, now I have this like massive thing. But on their turn, it goes down to whatever it says in this top right corner. Okay. Um, another big thing for this game is um, in order to attack the character cards directly, they need to be rested. Rested, <clears throat> and, and you know, character cards get rested in several different ways. <coughs> Excuse me. There are cards that uh, your opponent can play that will rest your character, so that they can attack your characters as well. Um, that's something that that can happen. Uh, but say I swing out my Vista, right? Then they can then attack my Vista next turn. Um, so you have to keep that in mind for when you're allocating attacks and when you're attacking with something. Um, it's super important. 
to know that. Uh, for my deck specifically, a lot of times I'm not worried about the characters so much. I really just want to attack their leader, uh, attack over their leader card to kill their life as quickly as possible because all of, because I have super low cost, uh, fast uh, characters, and I have him to pump them up. Because because really realistically, you're probably going against something that has five thousand. So what happens is. For this deck, anyway, and I guess this is kind of explaining the deck itself and not really the mechanics of the game. So my apologies, but it just kind of—it's kind of an interesting thing to think about, just be, for when you're playing. Um, you you want to kind of, so this is giving plus one thousand everything. So then that means all you have to do is is put a dawn underneath uh, this guy, like my Vista, and now he's at five thousand, so he could attack my 5000 Zoro and, uh, and and you know that that's something that you either need to counter out of it or you just take it and you take the life uh, so so to go into that into the battling of things right so let's say let's say we've got a 5000 a 5000 Vista uh, going against a 5000 Zoro okay and let's say yep yeah, this is my hand okay this is my hand right here I've got an Otama and I have a, a Gum Gum Jet Pistol. Opponent is, a, is swinging at me with a 5,000 Vista. I have a 5,000 Zoro. What does that mean? So what that means is I need to counter. I need to counter and get him up to 6,000 because uh, if you're attacking and it's equal, then the attacker wins. So 5,000 to 5,000, this would actually go through, and I would lose a life. Um, since he's swinging straight at my leader, okay? Uh, but uh, if you don't want to lose that life, because it's, and mind you, you only lose a life if you're swinging at the leader, not at characters, so it's only at the leader. Uh, if I don't want to lose that life, what I can do is see how it says, once it, see how it says counter plus 2,000 right there? I can discard this card into my, into my trash pile, and now my Zoro will be at 7,000 only for that battle. So now say so say if you know you, you get a you, this Gordon is pumped up to to uh, to five thousand. Let's say that. So say this a whole. So okay, we got through the Vista. We got through the Vista. Like that's that's rested. It's done. Now we have a Gordon at five thousand versus the Zero at five thousand. And all I have in my hand is this uh, Gum Gum Jet Pistol. Uh, I would actually just have to take that. Um, because I wouldn't be able to counter out of it. I don't have a way to counter out of it, so you just lose the life, okay? So, here's where this is kind of neat. You lose the life, but you also gain card advantage with that, okay? So, obviously, this is this is purely uh, RNG. Whatever comes off the top top five uh, at the beginning of the match uh, is what you is what you have in your life. Um, I, there, there are certain cards that do add, that you can potentially add life to to your life pile, um, it's I, I'll probably make a, a profile on it because it's kind of neat and it's actually uh, the new color that just came out not too long ago, um, so it's kind of it's kind of sweet. Um, so uh, so you take the so you get a card which is pretty nice. Um, you know, obviously you don't want to take too many of them because this is how you stay alive and you win the game. But you get you so you get a card and that can be whatever it is is whatever it is. Um, but one thing to to note is um, there are sometimes, uh, well, actually, oftentimes there are cards that have this thing called trigger on it. Okay, so trigger. So that what this means is if it's in my if it's in my life pile and I pick it up and it has a trigger effect. Let me see if I can get that to auto focus in. It has a trigger effect and then you can do whatever that trigger says. So I can KO to one of your opponent's rested characters with a cost of three or less. Pretty good against my deck because a lot of my stuff is three or less. Um, so that's pretty decent. Um, so that's so that's another facet of life. Uh, and a lot of and there's some decks that play a lot of triggers within their deck, so there's a good chance that they will have so it's like you're getting so you're getting bonus from your life, right? So it's all it's kind of Th those decks kind of revolve around that, where you kind of want to lose life because then you get because the triggers are usually pretty decent, right? They're well, I'm so, I'm saying that as if you know, you're probably watching this to to learn how to play the game. My apologies, but the triggers are pretty neat, and it, and it can give you it can give you cards. See, like this one, the trigger is draw two cards and trash one card from your hand. So you're getting so you're getting to play this at the same time, and then you so you're getting plus two, and then you get to you get to stack your hand, right? So that's pretty sweet. Um, 
so that's the neat thing with life. I really love this mechanic. I love the Dawn mechanic. It's a really cool game. Really, really neat. Um, and so the other thing is um, when so, so so say this is my board, right? This is what I have out on the board. Um, and say nothing's nothing's rested, right? Um, so the only thing that my opponent can attack is my leader, okay? And the only way you can stop them attacking the leader, you can't use these. So you can't use these ones specifically to to block uh, the attack. But if I were to have something on the field that has the word blocker on it, right there, if you can see that. Sorry, it's kind of. Let me see if I can get to autofocus. Maybe not. Uh, well, you can kind of make it out. Sorry, it's super small. It's like super duper small. But these are the only cards that can like block an attack um, at your leader um, if you want to. Uh, and what kind of sucks about this too is like it's like you know how he only has five thousand power. Say say your say your opponent's swinging with a fourteen thousand power uh, car, card or character. Um, this would eat all of it. It's like they would just it would just stop it. Period. Um, and uh, and that's that. <laughs> so so that's like it's, in my opinion that feels kind of bad. You know what I mean? But obviously that's just when you have to play for the blocker or get rid of the blocker before you swing in with a with a massive uh, hit like that. Um, so yeah. Uh, so it's kind of neat. Um, it's kind of it's kind of interesting because then because not everything's inherently a blocker. Uh, like like in magic, uh, you know what I mean. You can block with any creature that you want. Obviously, there's trample and stuff like that. But um, but yeah, so you can also so you, you can put dawn or anything anything to pump it up by a thousand. I'm trying to think if there's anything that might be it, guys. Um, I just want to explain the blocker mechanic, the leader, how the leader mechanic, how you lose life, um, how to pump up things. You can know you can put the dawn underneath anything you want to pump it up. Uh, so that's pretty neat. So that's what I would do with my with my deck is I put one underneath Zoro, and then you'd put two underneath uh, two underneath uh, Vista, or no, just one. Sorry, 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 one, one underneath Vista because three, four, five because he pumps them up by a thousand, and then two underneath uh, Gordon, and all of a sudden I have three things that can attack your life um, on turn whatever it might be, turn two, whatever. Obviously, I probably wouldn't be able to get the Vista out because it's a three. But anyway, that's kind of the concept of, of this deck is to pump out. And and in my opinion, the, the Zero deck, um, pretty easy to play, pretty straightforward. Uh, so if you're just getting into the deck, into the game, Red's definitely, uh, it's, and it's pretty good too. Um, Red's definitely a good way to go. Um, but yeah, I'll be doing deck profiles on, on other, on other, um, uh, on other decks, and one I'll do a full deck profile on this, and kind of just you know show show you how to play it. Um, that's my big that's my big nine, my big nine drop. But yeah, I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them down in the comments. Obviously, there's a lot more um, mechanics to the game, uh, and I only showed the the very basic ones, the blocking, the uh, the main what you can do. You can do stuff in the main phase. A lot of it's explained on the card, which is really nice. This isn't like Yu-Gi-Oh, where you have to read three paragraphs in order to try and understand a card. Uh, so that's really nice. Oh, and then don't do what I do all the time, and take your <laughs> put your leader into your deck because I do that all the time. I'm not used to that still uh, somehow. Um, usually you have different sleeves for your Dawn. Uh, I just threw this together. I finally got all the cards for this and I threw it together so I could play test uh, last week. Um, so usually this is a different sleeve. Usually this is also a different sleeve. Uh, a lot of times people put these into like a case. Uh, you can put them into like a plastic case to, to put it out right here. Uh, so that's kind of nice, but anyway, any questions, guys? Just let me know in the comments. I'll try. I'll do my best to answer all of them. Um, and I hope this was helpful. Uh, and thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.